And I think yeah. really my, my whole sort of, you know, career has, has sort of led up to this moment. Yeah. Um, this is the moment being a big song in the yeah. show. Well, let's be serious. You know, this, this is, this, this is the moment though, isn't it really uh, being on Skype sessions, being able to, no. True. All right. I, you know, very much. Know. All right. That was a reach. This is the moment. This is the day when I sent all my doubts and demons on their way. Every endeavor I have made ever is coming into play. Is here and now. So, welcome to the Skype sessions. The <laughs> The last time I talked to you, you were, um, I was talking to you for Rock of Ages when I was at the Denver Post. Uh, welcome back to Denver, first of all. Thank you. Yeah, we're looking forward. Uh, we'll be there in a few days. And uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite cities, so I'm looking forward to getting back there with a the new show. I remember one thing about your visit to Denver was that you went out, uh, I believe, one night and was sort of did uh, some rocking out with Jim Brewer. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We were there uh, the same time as him. He had a big stand-up show, and uh, got to meet him. Um, <clears throat> Sean Janess, yeah. who's in this show also, right. knows him through the Dan Band sort of scene of comics and all of that. So, uh, yeah, we had a good time with yeah. Jim. I know a lot of uh, young women at the Rock Bar were thrilled to see you that night. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> You know what was great for me about Rock of Ages is I took my brother, who doesn't usually go to theater, and I think that that show turned him into a theater lover. I have a feeling that happened all over the country. What was being in Rock of Ages like for you in terms of bringing theater to new audiences? Well, yeah, absolutely. Those were uh, were huge sort of bonuses uh, to that job. Um, there was something special about the show from the very beginning, and I, and I knew that. Um, I had seen a reading of it a staged reading of it maybe <clears throat> a year or so before we brought it to New York uh, off Broadway. And uh, I was like, oh, there's definitely something there. And they had spoken to me about it years before, right when I came off American Idol. Yeah. They always had me in mind for Stacey Jacks, though, the sort of rock star character. Smart but when I, met, yeah, when I met Kristen, the director, she always saw me as Drew mm -hmm. and thought I would bring a lot of heart to Drew. And, and I... I agreed, and uh, <laughs> no, I, I saw something very special about the show, and 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 knew it would uh, connect with audiences because, sure, it's an awesome you know rock show and the great songs and that nostalgia, but <clears throat> and the beautiful girls and stripper poles and things like that. But there's something very heartful and genuine about it as well, and you know, Rock of Ages was was awesome you know, building off the strength of American Idol and all of that. And, and now with Jekyll and Hyde, you know, getting to, to go even further with the uh, drama. Is it fair for me to ask you what you thought of the film? Oddly enough, and I, I've, I've not seen the film. Okay. I, I got to be a part of it um, a couple of days there in Miami where they were shooting, and I did a small cameo, and it was fun and a great way to cap off my experience. But I don't know. I just haven't had a chance to see it yet, and I've yeah. just kind of – just kind of leaving it where it is. You know? I know that Rock of Ages was sort of the perfect project for you at that time, but as you said, you knew at that time that you had a lot more to offer, and Jekyll and Hyde is really giving you the chance to show people you know, some more dramatic chops. What's, what's that been like for you? Been really wonderful. You know, I, uh, I've always sort of wanted an opportunity to you know, take on a bit more of a serious role. I mean, I think as an actor, you, we approach every role um, with the same sort of set of objectives and all of that, you know, whether it's Rock of Ages or Shakespeare, yeah. whether it's uh, Jekyll and Hyde or Book of Mormon. Yeah. It's got to be that sense of uh, honesty about it. And and I think really um, my experience with Rock of Ages actually has helped me a great deal with Jekyll and Hyde. Tell us about working with Deborah Cox because I know that this is a new spin on it. You know, Deborah has just been a tremendous addition to the cast. You know, we're twins, so we, um, <laughs> we get along very, very well. In fact, her suite is attached to mine, so... Yeah. Nice. Well, okay, I, I understand the whole twinning with uh, 
Jekyll and Hyde, but what you're saying is that you and Deborah Cox are the twins. We are twins. That yeah. is the total new spin. <laughs> yeah, that is the spin of the show. So come check it out. We are actually attached at the head. Um, <laughs> that is no, totally- you know what it is? She's um, she's got such an incredible gift that she's blessed with um, uh, an instrument that is just otherworldly, really. But her uh, vulnerability, but this sheer power that she has as well yeah so the concept of the show is really um you know it's sort of this minimalist um design you know very uh very gothic and victorian but you know sort of a stripped down edgier darker sort of um you know tim burton-esque um sort of you know, scheme and it's got this steampunk, yeah. you know, energy about it, which is really cool. It's it's definitely very sexy. I mean, all of those Victorian silhouettes that we've, you know, come to expect from yeah. such a piece, but, awesome. you know, m- a bit more modern, you right. know, orchestrations yeah. are all beefed up and, you know, a bit more rocked out. And what do you, what do you tap into that helps you to sort of bring out the humanity in uh, Dr. Hyde? You know, well, first it it really starts with Henry for me because you know that's that's where we that's where we're that's where we begin, and it yeah. begins with Henry and 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 his humanity and his relationship with his father, and I think everything really kind of comes from that. Do you know, like that sort of that that angst from within him, the sort of pent up sexual frustrations, his his um, you know, he's a brilliant uh, scientist um, that's just so misunderstood, and you know, his father has taken this turn. Um, for the worse and, and, and has become a madman, you know, they've got him sort of holed up in this insane asylum and he can't really do anything about it. He probably was a prominent, prominent member of society. So for me, it really begins with Henry and his father and probably that's all he has, you know, that's, he has a beautiful fiance, but there's no mother, there's no brothers and sisters, there's no other family to speak of. So really the stakes are so high right there and, and certainly the chemical that enters his body that's gone wrong and all of that. But is it the chemical? (laughs) Maybe it's something else too. So. Actually, a, a hair, po- a hair, uh, a haircut, maintenance, trim. Yes. Scheduled. Yeah. Well, this will show you that I don't have the same problem. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs>